Hello again, I am Blunty. Did you get a PS5 for Christmas? Are you thirsty to fill it with games? Are you already worried about the anemic storage space on board? Are you already looking around for a Zippy M.2 drive? You may have seen that Sony strongly insist on making sure you get a drive with a built-in heatsink to make sure performance is stable because solid-state memory like M.2 drives will slow themselves down if they get too hot to prevent heat damage. But maybe you found a bargain on an M.2 drive that doesn't have its own heatsink and you want to use it safely on your PS5. Maybe you need to take a look at the newly released Accelerate Gaming PS5 SSD combo drive bay cover and heatsink. Two in one. And maybe you should watch the rest of this video as I attach a thermo probe to it and put it through its paces to make sure it does what it, can, it says it does on the box. With thanks to PNY, who have sponsored this video for a quick look at probably the most innovative solution to the PS5's SSD arrangement that I've seen yet. This is a bespoke heatsink not designed as others have been to fit inside the PS5's little cubby hole for the SSD, but to replace the cover bay port entirely with an integrated heatsink. And doing it this way means the mass of the heatsink itself can be much more significant than any other heatsink designed to fit inside and under the default cover plate. And instead of there being an air gap, air being a very poor thermal conductor itself, the cover plate itself becomes a dissipating plate all the way up while maintaining some space around the sides and edges to allow for normal airflow from the PS5's own cooling system to still move through the bay properly. All pretty clever, actually, in my opinion. Doesn't hurt, it's also a lot nicer looking than Sony's cheapo sliver of grotty looking aluminium. Not much of a thing, really, because the sides of the plates of the PS5 are opaque, but, you know, still. So, without much to talk about physically, aside from the nice point of it coming included with its own retaining screw, uh, it's, well, it's just time to put it to work, isn't it? Baseline first, the drive in its native state. In this case, I'm testing with a CS3040, two terabyte SSD I've looked at previously. And as the PS5 has no user side reporting of temperatures for any components, for my measurements, I've placed a K-type thermocouple under the label of the drive, making direct contact with one of the solid state memory chips on the drive itself. My multimeter only reads in full degree increments, but it'll be more than enough to find out how much of a relative delta there is with and without. I ran a bunch of everyday use case tests and ran each a few times to make sure I was getting reliable and consistent data. And the story goes like this. In gameplay, in this instance, Spider-Man Miles Morales installed normally, the drive cooked up, teetering over the 50 degrees Celsius mark and stayed quite stable around there through extended gameplay sessions. Copying three games for a total of just over 144 gigabytes, a much more sustained load than the fluctuating demands of gameplay, resulted in a temperature rapidly rising up to about 66 degrees and pretty much staying there for the rest of the copying process. So, baseline done, now we install the PNY cover and heatsink combo, all one piece with an integrated extruded aluminium heatsink, thermal transfer material underneath, and installation was just as easy as the Sony default cover is. It installed and fit really nicely actually, just on style points alone, I really quite like it. More importantly though, how's the performance? Well. I expected an improvement, any improvement. At the very least, I expected for the temperature to stay a lot more stable and fluctuate less just by virtue of the fact that there's extra thermal mass sitting there, but it actually kept temperatures significantly lower than I expected. Pleasant surprise. In game, the temperature stabilized at around 40 degrees and stayed there. So that's around a 22% improvement actually, a whole 10 degrees lower. Honestly, wasn't expecting that much. Very pleasantly surprised indeed. And yes, it stayed there for the rest of the gaming session, very occasionally ramping up slightly. And when I say slightly, I mean slightly, as in 43 degrees instead of the 40 it was generally stable at. Well then, significantly impressed by gaming duties, let's chuck the data transfer test at it and see how we go. Exact same result, better even. Temperatures ramped up under constant load to flickering at 47 degrees or so compared to the 66 degrees that was the default install. That's a 33% sustained temperature drop. Now, to be fair, 
and open about this. This is a sponsored video, so featuring competing products is difficult. So I didn't test against the third party heat spreader I had been using. But at the same time, this product is specifically designed for use with raw drives, not to replace pre-installed heat sinks. So this data is relevant to that and points out how important a good heat sink is regardless. And while the specific tolerances and settings of when an SSD will thermal throttle can vary a bit between manufacturers and their suppliers and the way they've got things set up in general, somewhere between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius is where you start seeing drives throttle down. But in many cases, the closer you get to that max temperature, the more likely you are to experience thermal throttling as sort of some do it incrementally. Plus, lower and more consistent temperatures are just better for the overall lifespan of SSDs in general, and in fact, most electronics in general, because you're reducing the physical strain of thermal expansion and contraction cycles as they heat and cool and heat and cool and heat and cool. The less extreme that is, the better off your gear is going to be. So, end of story. I'm keeping this thing in my PS5 after I'm done with this video. It does a very nice job, better than I expected from it, and that is always a nice thing to be surprised by. So... Hope this has been useful for you. Thanks again to PNY for sponsoring this product look. Thanks as always to the patrons whose continued uh, support is valuable from both a hooray, I get to eat food, and also a hooray, people appreciate the stupid YouTube stuff I do. So, uh, you know, both points of that view is, is quite pleasant, really, when you think about it. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.